My father told me one story that has remained with me all these years. He told me about a murder that had been committed in his town when he was a young boy. Now in those days, murderers were hanged, and they were hanged outdoors in broad daylight. And all of the people in the town were asked to, invited to see the act and all the gruesome details that went along with it. And this was a, an eager and a boisterous and an anxious assembly, each one of them pushing and crowding and shoving to be certain, to be in at the moment of death. Well, my father managed to get himself well out in front of all the others where he could watch the spectacle, he could see better. Then he saw the rope, and he saw it adjusted around the man's neck, and he saw the black cap pulled down over the man's face, and he turned his head away. He could stand no more. And for the rest of his life, he felt humiliated, shamed, that he could have taken even that much of a hand in the killing of a fellow man. These two lost souls, Nathan Leopold, Richard Loeb, sit here tonight hated, despised, outcast with an entire community shouting for their blood. I've stood here for three months the way a man might stand at the edge of the ocean trying to sweep back the tide. But now I believe the wind is falling and the seas are subsiding, and I hope they are. But still I know that the easy thing to do and the popular thing to do will be to hang little Dickie Loeb, young babe Leopold, and that men and women who do not think will applaud When the public gets interested and demands a punishment, the only one that they can ever think of is death. This court's been told that we come here today with a preposterous plea for mercy. When did any plea for mercy become preposterous in any tribunal in the universe? I'm pleading for a time when through patience and judgment, and understanding and charity. We will learn that all life is worth saving and that the highest attribute of man is mercy. 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 I grew up in a large family. Maybe that's why today when people ask me my opinion of abortion, I tell them, well, I'm somewhere in the middle on that subject. I was the fifth of eight children. 